Well, uh, I mean, credit to South Carolina. They did a, a great job. They were disruptive uh, all day, closed gaps really quickly defensively. Um, you know, during a key stretch of that second quarter, turned us over, turned it into quick points at the other end, which is, a, you know, obviously a staple and a hallmark of what they do. It's when they're at their best. Um, they were dominant on the boards as well, you know, and, and what we needed, we, we needed shots to go down, you know, on the other end of the floor to counter those things. And, and it just wasn't our day shooting the basketball. And so, um, you know, the looks that we got, I thought we got some look, good looks, of course. Uh, they, they just didn't fall. And uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. And so all the credit to them. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of this team for what they've overcome this year. Uh, they've been an absolute, absolute joy to coach. Um, you know, it's one of those seasons that you just never want it to end. Uh, I've just had so much fun with them, with our staff, um, in the most adverse conditions. I mean, it, it's just been a remarkable thing, um, you know, to be a part of. Uh, incredible leadership, so many new faces coming together and playing, you know, our best basketball at the end of the year. Uh, I, just, I, I just couldn't be um, more grateful uh, to be a part of this group. Coach, thank you so much for those comments. We'll now open the floor up for questions for our media. We do ask that you please identify yourself by name as well as your media affiliation. Our first question goes to Ab Andrew Hobner. Yeah, Andrew Hobner, uh, KZI TV. Scott, you mentioned the closeouts of uh, South Carolina's defense a little bit earlier in your statement. It seemed like their guards in particular were really, really quick out there. Um, could you just maybe expand on, you know, your assessment of how they were able to close out so quick and just how that disrupted you guys trying to get into a rhythm shooting? from? Well, because of their speed, because of their athleticism, and also, I mean, I thought they closed at the rim uh, even better than the perimeter, to be honest. I, I thought in the times that we got to the rim, they were disruptive um, coming out of help. And, you know, I, I thought that was... Um, probably made us pause just a little bit. Uh, obviously, uh, it was much different than our game a couple of days ago and different than most games. You know, there's very few teams that, that have the length and athleticism that South Carolina has. And, and so um, what that does to you, it, it, it forces you, A, to make good reads, quick reads, and move the ball quickly. Um, I just felt like we were just a half step slow uh, in our reads. And against a team like this, you, that ball's got to zip, you know, to, to create the looks that we're used to getting. And so they rushed our shots because of those closeouts. Um, you know, so we needed the ones where we were open, where we did get good looks to go down, and they just didn't, you know. And, and so you're just kind of hoping for that two, three possession stretch early just for us to settle in. And the game, it just felt like the game never was slow for us, you know, and the game's been slow for this team, you know, for two months now on the offensive end of the floor where we've read things clearly, that ball's moved crisp and clear, clean, I should say, and, um, and, and which is the reason that we're what we are in three-point shooting. You know, this team passes very well. We have shooters all over the floor, and today that ball just didn't go down for us. And so, um, you know, credit to them, like I said, uh, for being really active defensively um, and very disciplined in their closeouts. Okay, I believe we had a follow-up question from Andrew. Yeah, uh, the double text at the end there, um, was that just over general officiating? And would, would you be willing to kind of discuss what was said there between you and Don? It, well, it wasn't me. I, I thought I heard something from their bench I didn't like, and I told them. And it, that, those things happen. It, it's it's sports, you know. I mean, we're all hyper competitive, and so um, you know, I I it, it's fine. I mean, we talked after the game, and everything's great. I think the world of Don known Don for many years now, and um, you know, she's a, she just does an outstanding job for for the game. Um, for life, uh, for USA, I mean, sh she is who she is. And so, um, you know, this is the third time we've played against them. Um, I've spent a lot of time with her at USA in Colorado Springs and have gotten to know her pretty well. And, and so um, everything's fine, you know, things happen in, uh, in the heat of the moment sometimes. Our next question comes from Steve Gress. Hey, Scott, Steve Gress, Corvallis is at times. Um, you guys, you know, had that tough stretch to end the first half and you're only down 12. And I know going into the half, you guys, Hey, you're, you're right in there. How difficult was it for them to come out, get those six quick points and just kind of keep that run on, you know, to kind of overcome at that point. Cause the deficit just kept growing. 
Uh, that was probably the game right there. You know, coming out the uh, three, two turnovers and a miss. I think uh, to start the second half. Uh, you know, we it, it give them all the credit. I, I mean, they disrupted us and they turned it into points, and that's what good teams do. And um, you know, we needed to come out with a little better start to that second half. Uh, we weren't able to capitalize. You know, on our time at halftime and. Um, you know, it, it, the lead grew to 20 uh, real quick, and that was probably the ball game. Next question comes from Nick Krupke. Scott, 10, 15 years down the line, when you're looking back at photos of this team, uh, obviously playing through the most unique circumstances, what memories are going to stick out to you about what made this team stand out during a time when nobody expected it to look like this? <laughs> You know, I just think in a general sense that it was just literally fun to walk in the gym every day. Uh, their attitudes were great every single day. It started at the top with Aaliyah and Taya, and it just filtered through. And this team, their friend, I mean, it's really remarkable because we were so separated. Even as a team, we were, we were more separated this year than ever, even though we could practice together. That was kind of the only time we were, we were able to be together. And then to come together and for them to form friendships and a bond that was so tight, like they knew each other forever. Um, so I think the overarching feeling is just, I came in and just had a great time with this group every single day. It never felt like work, you know? I mean, certain, certainly there were frustrations at moments, you know, that coaches always have with their team, you know, and, and I'm sure with them with me, but that's normal. But the, it, it was just enjoyable. Every minute of it was. And that's the reason that this team competed down the stretch like they did. Uh, we've talked about it. You know, you, local media knows. I mean, this, it, this team had a chance to just say, ah, forget it. Let's move on to next year. You know, and they didn't. They just kept getting better every single day. You know, and um, it, it took a one seed to knock us out. And um, what, what can you say? Uh, so I, I'm just... It's going to be a year that I look back on uh, as fondly as, as any. We'll take a question from Lindsay Schnell with USA Today. Hey, Scott. Uh, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. It's a weird um, offseason now because you could get everyone back, uh, like the seniors in particular. How long before you need to have an answer, like from – Aaliyah and Ellie, I guess. I mean, would you take them back, you know, late September if they did, if that's what they decided? How important will that be as you start to recruit and figure out what next season is going to look like? Yeah, well, a great question, uh, Lindsay. I mean, we're all uh, in that boat, I think, everybody in our position uh, right now. You know, your season ends, and then when do those conversations come? And I haven't put that pressure on them at all. Uh, they know that they're all welcome to come back. Um, they're amazing people, amazing players, uh, just a joy to be around, um, and amazing culture people, and obviously very talented. And, and so um, they're welcome here as long as they can be here. And you know we'll have those discussions coming up. Um, would I take them in September? Well, I hope I don't have to wait that long, um, you know, for an answer. Uh, but uh, you know, that's what's up next. You know, is how are we looking going into next year? What are people going to do? And so our exit meetings uh, are going to come up pretty soon, and we'll, we'll know more then, I'm sure. We'll take another question from Andrew. Given what this year has been just between COVID pauses, the run to end the year and, and get to this place, uh, you know, at the start, is there one moment that, you know, that you could pick out of your brain that exemplifies exactly what this team is and, and what it means to you and what they mean to you out of all of the teams that, you know, you coach going back to your days at Fox. <laughs> wow. Um, it's hard to come up with a moment, man. I, I, I mean, I, I can think of, um, I mean, when I think of this team, I think of that game at UCLA when things just came together and when their belief in themselves was, was um, I think it was forming, but that day um, it was like it's, it set. It was like, okay, we are good. 
uh, we had had great moments to that point and a couple, you know, significant wins. Um, but that day was the day where this team just saw themselves as I saw them. And as a teacher, you just hope for that moment where, you know, they see their potential, they see it, they have a belief in them that, that you as their leader sees and you've been building towards that moment. And that day was the day. And certainly the USC game two days before was an important one for us. Um, we hit a different level there too, but the UCLA win was was a huge win for us. It's the reason we're in the tournament probably because that led to the Oregon game and so on. Um, and so uh, I, I just loved that moment for them. And I just, the, walking in that locker room and just hearing the joy uh, was just like, wow, we, we actually are what we thought we were. Uh, actually, maybe we're a little bit better than they even thought they were at that point, you know? So for me, um, you know, it was that day, a culmination of all the experiences you know, that we'd had um, all year long to that moment. And it was a grind to get there, you know, uh, a lot of new people here. And, um, but that's the day the light went on. We'll take our final question from Steve. Hey, Scott, Steve Grass again. Um, you've been in this business for a long time. You've had a lot of success. Teams do a lot of different things. Do you feel like this might have been the best coaching job that you and your staff have put together with everything you guys have to go through? Is it maybe that you're most proud of, or is it is it right up there at least? Uh, I I could never say that. I I'd, I've you know I've had that said to me, and I think people look at the you know the freshmen, they look at new players, they look at how bad we played in some ways in December, um, to how well we've played down the stretch of this year. Um, you know, and seeing the, ma the amount of growth, you know, but I've had so many fun experiences with my teams and, you know, every year it's like this awesome challenge, this awesome puzzle to put together. And, you know, I mean, I won a national title with 10 true freshmen, I, you know, at Fox. And so th that's like an out of body experience. And then I've had years where we've come up a little short, but the team couldn't give any more than it did. And I, I mean, I think back to my first year at Oregon State and getting that team to believe in themselves and win two Pac-12 games, you know. So, so I, I feel like each group has its own amazing special qualities in those moments. But I couldn't say enough about our staff. I couldn't say enough about our team this year for doing what they've done under these circumstances. But to say it's like the best, I, I don't have a clue, man. I, I just love uh, doing what I do. Um, I love putting, trying my best to put on a great show for them, surround them with amazing people. We absolutely accomplished those things this year as a staff. Um, you know, and it was just so fun to see them flourish and get that belief in themselves and compete like the team I knew they could. You know, so um, I think any season where you can say those things, it just automatically ties for the top. Yeah. Um, like Coach Coach Rook said, you have to give credit to um, South Carolina. They they played a tough game. They took away what we wanted to do on offense, um, and we just weren't really ourselves, which is is a bummer. It's hard um, to go out like that. Um, I wish I could have been better for my team, but I'm just really proud of this group and just just the joy they bring. <laughs> Once again, if we do have any questions for our student athlete, please utilize the raise your hand feature. Our first question will come from Andrew. Hey, Leah, Andrew Hogner from uh, KZI. Um, looking back on this year, if, if you had to pick, you know, kind of one moment, whether that be on the court, off the court, on, on the planes, you know, to and from that, that exemplify what this team is and what this team will mean to you going through life, you know, what might one be? That's hard. Um, there's a lot of moments with this team. There's, there's that moment after that Washington State game that we really could have gave up, that we could have just put our heads down and moved on, um, focus on next year, uh, which you wouldn't think I would choose that moment, but that was, that was a moment that just showed what this group was. And then you move on to after the UCLA game, uh, just the joy the pure joy um, on everyone's faces when we were in that locker room, the second the uh, buzzer sound, just seeing um, my teammates' faces, those, that's what we preached all year is how good we could be. And so to see, see it pay off and all that hard work and I don't know, just seeing my teammates' faces after that UCLA game was something I'll always remember for sure. 
Our next question will go to Nick. Aliyah, Nick Krupke from KPTV in Beaverton. Uh, if you elect to come back or not, what's the indelible mark that you have with this team and, and this group of girls that in a year where the team's built on family, didn't get a whole lot of time to really hang out beyond the gym? Sorry, can you repeat the beginning of that question? <clears throat> in just a year of, of so much wildness, What's the indelible mark you have of these this group and of these girls where you know the, the program's built on family and you guys didn't get a whole lot of time beyond the floor? I just think the the value of communication, uh, whether that's in person, uh, on the phone, FaceTime, all that stuff, uh, is something we really we really took to heart this year because the time together was so valuable. Um, lack of time together because everything that was going on, we went through two different pauses. So just being able to find different ways to communicate with each other um, and just stay, sticking together through it all, it was a tough year. Um, and then to find joy in everything that we went through and to come in every single day together as a family um, with just smiles on our faces. I think of Noelle Manon and every day I saw her and just the the smile, the way she lit up every room she walked in. I mean, this group is just extremely special. Our next question come from, comes from Lindsay. Hey, Elia, it's Lindsay Schnell from USA Today. I know it's really hard right now and um, really tough to go out like this. Have you thought about if you're going to come back you know, especially after this game, did you walk into the locker room and say, I'm not going out like this. <laughs> I'm going back to Corvallis. I'm going to start working in the basketball center right away. Or when will you make that decision? I know you've already graduated. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really thought about it. My sole focus was on this year um, and this team. So I think conversations, obviously, with coach and staff, um, my parents is something that I'll have. And then I'll figure it out down the line. For sure. Next question goes to Steve. Hey, Leah, Steve Kress, Corvallis Gazette Times. I know that you guys had weathered the storm a little bit, I guess, you know, that, that tough stretch at the end of the first half and to, to only be down 12 through that. How difficult was it to see them come out six straight points so quickly to really put you guys behind the eight ball? And, and Scott said he thought that was really kind of the game right there in a, in a nutshell. Do you, I mean, how difficult was that? And do you feel like that was kind of the, the point that was a little bit too much to overcome? Yeah, that's never how you want to come out of halftime. Obviously, being down, you don't want to come out and give them the ball twice, miss, um, and have them get six straight points. But, yeah, I'd have to agree that is – or I would have to agree that probably was was the game. Um, and, obviously, I wish I could have done more for this group, this team. I wasn't at my best today when, I, when they needed me. Next question goes to Andrew. What did they do, Aaliyah, defensively that so well? I mean, it, it seemed like they just – the speed at which they closed you guys out, especially on the three-point line, just felt maybe a little bit different. But was there anything beyond just the, the athleticism that they were doing to kind of either run you guys off the line there or make it tough inside? Yeah, they they just covered a lot of ground. Um, their closeouts to the three-point line, and then it felt like when we, are t when we attacked, they were also all around the rim. Um, so, yeah, I think that was the biggest thing is just – uh, we were a second slow on all our passes and decision-making, which is a little abnormal for this group. I feel like we're usually on point. And, I mean, that starts with me. Uh, I got to be quicker in that. Um, and then my teammates usually follow. So I had to be the example. I started out slow. Um, but, yeah, I just think the way they covered ground and covered the floor um, is something that we struggled with today. Any final questions for our student-athlete? Any final questions? Aaliyah, congratulations on an outstanding season. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Go Beavs. Aaliyah, I'm sorry. I think we do have one more. We okay. can get it in. Uh, yeah. Lindsay, uh, last question goes to you. Sorry, Aaliyah, I have to ask you this. So um, if you do leave, who's the next leader on this team? That's been an incredible role you've filled this year. Who, who is uh, going to take that over? whenever you leave, whether it's now or in a year? Yeah, I mean, the first person that pops to my mind is Taya Corsdale. 
Uh, she's been there by my side through this whole thing. And so I think she'll definitely be the one to step up. And then obviously Taylor Jones is a loud voice and then someone who made a huge difference off the floor this year was Kennedy Brown. Uh, she just has a way of bringing everyone together. So I think those three, and they're gonna do a phenomenal job.